Hello everyone, Charles Watts here. Welcome to another edition of Inside Arsenal. It's Thursday morning and Arsenal have just beaten Barcelona 5-3 over in Los Angeles to bring their USA Tour to a successful conclusion. Really good game as well. I have to admit, I wasn't planning on watching it, but my son, being the little rascal that he is, decided to get me up at about 4.30 in the morning and I thought the game would be about an hour in when I got downstairs with him and uh, lo and behold, it wasn't because there was delay. So I got to see pretty much all of the game and what an exciting game it was as well. Lots of fun, really good goals, really high intensity, which Barcelona manager Xavi didn't seem to appreciate too much. Um, but it's just a really good game, really important game as well, I think. So we're going to talk about that in this uh, in this episode. We'll have a look at um, some of the talking points, see what Mikel Arteta had to say after the game as well, got some questions of you got from you guys, of course, at the end. Now, I'm going to start off with one of my apologies, apologies in advance, really, uh, which you see, you guys seem to love so much. Uh, but as you know, as I mentioned before, my neighbours, my new neighbours are having work done on their house in preparation for them moving in. And they are doing a bit of drilling and banging this morning already. And I just, if I, I'm going out later. So if I don't record it now, I'm not going to be able to record. So if you do hear any of that, then I am sorry, but hopefully it won't be too disruptive as we get this show going. So 5 3, what a great win that was. Arsenal scoring through Bakai Saka, through Kai Havertz, through two goals from Leandro Trossard, and one really, really good goal from Fabio Vieira at the end as well. Um, Good, yeah, it was a really good game. Saka, Arsenal went behind, Saka equalised, Arsenal went behind again. Havertz equalised, it was 2-2 at half-time. Then Trossard got two, two, one right foot, one left foot uh, soon after half-time. And then Barca got one back right at the end. Uh, through Ferran Torres, made it 4-3. But then Fabio Vieira went pretty much straight up the pitch and curled a really, really lovely finish. One of those sort of, we've seen Vieira do it before, kind of similar to the goal against Brentford, although he went into the other corner. Um, it did want to, well, what was it? I think it was in, I think it was a pre, no, it's in the summer tour. No, not so, sorry, the mid, the mid season tour, wasn't it? The winter break tour to Dubai. I remember Vieira scoring a really good goal from distance as well. So we know he's got that in him and that was a good goal by him. I think probably important as well, because he hadn't had the best to start to pre-season. He missed that penalty in the shootout against United, which although it didn't matter, I think for him, especially that would have been a bit disappointing because he probably knows he's got a really, this is a really important preseason for him. So I imagine that would have sucked the confidence out of him a little bit. He looked disappointed after that penalty he missed. But um, so I think scoring a goal like that in a stadium like this, in a, you know, against a team like United, uh, like Barcelona, I think would be really important to Fabio, Fabio Vieira. So that was a nice end to the game for him. And it was a thoroughly deserved win for Arsenal. They were the better side, no doubt about it. Defensively, there was a few individual errors and we know that they need to get cut out before the season starts. You look at all of the Barcelona goals. The first one, uh, Martin Odegaard got robbed in possession, sort of deep, or well, midway in the Arsenal half. We saw that a couple of times towards the end of last season as well, when he got he had the ball sort of turned over when he was in possession. Teams broke away and scored and it happened again. Ramsdale making a good save, but um, the guy scored on the follow-up. So that was disappointing. The second goal was a free kick from Rafinha. Big deflection off Martin Odegaard, the completely wrong-footed Ramsdale. Ramsdale was furious at Odegaard. I'm not surprised, to be honest, because Odegaard kind of turned his back, was turned sideways, really, on the free kick. And the ball glanced off him as he was doing that and deflected into the far corner. It was pretty poor from Odegaard, I think. Um, I'm pretty sure Mikel Arteta will have a word or two to say about uh, to him about that. And then even the third goal, Rob Holden had just come on. Poor old Rob Holden had uh, just come on and he slipped on the pitch was terrible and he slipped and that sort of gave away possession and Barcelona broke away and scored. So all three of the goals that Barca scored were Arsenal's own doing really. And that's something they'll need to cut out and iron out before the season starts. But, you know, in terms of an attacking force, I thought Arsenal were really good. They were the better team comfortably. I mean, you, when you, um, you sort of look at the team that Arsenal started. It was a strong team. You had Ben White at right back. You had Jurian Timber playing at left back. So again, Kieran Tierney, who I will talk about a little bit later on in this show. Again, he didn't get to start and Timber was preferred ahead of him. So in all three of the games so far in this pre-season tour, you've had, who is it? It was Tommy Asu at left back against United. It was Kivior at left back against the All-Stars. And now it's Timber at left back 
um, against Barcelona. You know, neither, not one of those three is a natural left back yet. They've all started ahead of Kieran Tierney. But so that was the back four was Ben White, Saliba, Gabriel and Timber. Then you had Odegaard, Thomas Partey playing in place of Declan Rice, who was picked up a bit of an injury. I'll talk about that later on. So there was no Rice. So Thomas came in as a holding midfielder. He played behind Odegaard and Havertz. And you had Trossard in place of Martinelli, Jesus and Bukayo Saka. So there's a strong lineup. You can see the substitutes who came on if you're watching this on the... Uh, on YouTube, Tierney came on, Smith Rowe, Martinelli, and Ketia Kivior holding, Jorginho Vieira, and Cozia Dubri all came on during the second half. I mean, you look at the stats for the game, and it shows that Arsenal really did dominate. They had 20 shots, Barcelona only had nine, Arsenal had nine on target, Barca only had four. Barca, as you would expect, they dominated possession at 60%. They made 422 passes to Arsenal's 285. But, you know, those. Those are very misleading, those possession stats. Arsenal were always the most threatening team, I thought, and um, you know, comfortably deserved this victory. And it was a good response after what happened against United. Look, it is only pre-season. I spoke about that United game and it was, it is only pre-season, but it was a pretty lacklustre, disappointing performance. It wasn't just a defeat. It was the performance against United, which was a bit worrying. You wanted to see more. You wanted Arsenal play with a bit more personality to show that there were partnerships forming. And so they needed to respond, I thought, against Barcelona. I thought it was important. More so, the performance was more important than the result against Barcelona. And the fact they got both, I thought, was really, really encouraging. And, you know, Havertz scored again. It's two goals in three games for Kai Havertz in this preseason tour. Yet he seems to still be coming in for criticism, which I just don't really get. It's going to take him time to settle in. Obviously, it is. He's not going to play at his best straight away. Playing in a new position that he's not really used to, in, with new teammates that he's not used to under a new manager. And yet he still scored two goals in three games. And it's, like, it's a bit harsh that he's getting some criticism. So I thought that was really good and positive today that Havertz scored. Um, Trossard, who I'll sp speak about in a minute, was was fantastic yet again. He's been excellent in this preseason, really strong. And um, and they were just a little bit too strong, too sharp, which is no surprise, really, given Barca. That, you know, they didn't play their last game. It was cancelled because they'd been ill. Players hadn't played. They just weren't at the same level, I thought, of Arsenal. And Xavi was had a bit of a go afterwards at the intensity. You saw him and Mikel were having quite a heated conversation at full time. And Xavi was asked about that in the press conference afterwards. And he said he was surprised at the intensity that Arsenal played at. He said it was like a Champions League game for them. But you now Arsenal are just a little bit ahead of Barcelona at the moment when it comes to fitness work. And I think after what happened against United and the criticism they came in for against United, I thought they were always going to be play this game and approach it with real intensity because they wanted to make a bit of a point and show that that United game was a little bit of a one-off. So, um, yeah, Xavi was a little bit disappointed. And Mikel was speaking about it afterwards. And he said, look, it got really competitive for a friendly match after the first tackle, after the first goal. Obviously, in front of 70,000 fans, it helps to create an atmosphere. They are elite players and they all want to win. At the end, it got a bit too much at times for a friendly, to be fair. But I think we showed all the people that came to watch the game that it was really good. He was then asked about what Xavi had had to say. And he said, at the end of the day, football belongs to the players. We're playing in front of 70,000 people. And when it comes down to it, as soon as the game starts, they'll rebel against the coaches and do what they want. As soon as there's the first foul, as soon as there's the first goal, they'll get, get they'll start getting intense and they'll start playing. Which I thought was a good comment from Arteta there. You can, as a manager, I suppose, you can send the players out and say, look, try and look after yourselves a little bit. It is pre-season. But when you're a player in it, and you've got that competitive attitude and nature about you, and you're playing against Barcelona in a jam-packed stadium with all your fans there, it's very hard not to play with a sort of intensity, I think, or it would be if I knew what it was like to be an elite sportsman. But I feel like I probably should, yeah, I, that I'd be in that feeling like that if I was playing. Um, and so, yeah, I thought that was quite a good response from Arteta, actually, to what, to what Xavi had to say. OK, Leandro Trossard, we've got to talk about him now. He was named man of the match today, MVP, as you call it in America. Uh, two goals, one was left foot, one was a right foot. Both really, really good finishes. Adding to the really good goal he scored against the All-Stars in that 5-0 win. And he's had a really, really strong preseason, Leandro Trossard. And I've wrote a piece that's just gone out on my website, actually, charleswatts.football. You can find it on my Twitter and my Facebook pages as well. I've posted the links on there to it, talking about Trossard and how he's just becoming impossible to ignore, I think, Ignores probably the wrong word because he's not being ignored. But I think when you look at Arsenal now and you kind of predict who might play in that opening game against Nottingham Forest, as in you're trying to predict what Mikel Arteta is going to do against Nottingham Forest, it's hard to see Trossard in that starting eleven. I think. And 
the more you actually kind of look at Trossard and his performances and the way he plays and the way Arsenal play when Trossard plays, I think it's he's, it's really hard to ignore that he probably should be starting, whether it be against I don't, ahead of, I don't know, Martinelli or Jesus. I don't know. Jesus played very, very well today. He didn't score, but he played very well. Mikel Arteta said afterwards that he thought Jesus, it was the best you've seen him in months in terms of what he brought. And he did play well. He was really lively. Um, and you just wonder, you know, where does Trossard can fit in? Can you play him, you know, in the Havertz role, even give Havertz a little bit more time to to settle in to his position? It's just, you just look at it and you think somewhere Mikel needs to find a place for him in the starting 11. He needs to be on the pitch more often than not because I really think Arsenal are a better team when Leandro Trossard plays. He just provides so much. He's got that technical quality. He can go left foot, right foot. He can play in a number of positions. He's so good in possession. He can finish. I've said it a load of times that last season, he easily could have scored seven or eight goals between when he joined and when the season finished. He only got one and he was so unlucky for that. He kept kept hitting the woodwork, having goals ruled out. It was just really, really unlucky, I thought. But in pre-season already, we've seen what he can do. We can see how good a finisher he is. And yeah, I just look at it and I think he, he probably should be starting that game against Nottingham Forest. There needs to be a place found in the team for him. Mikel was asked about it after the game. He said it's great to see him score. He's been working so hard. He came in a really good condition for pre-season. He's a player that gives us something very different to the wingers that we have. He's got incredible versatility and unpredictability to play in those positions. It's great and he will be and it will be good for his confidence. That is for sure. And it definitely will be good for his confidence. And um, I think he's a wonderful player, Leandro Trossard. I really, really do. We talk about players struggling to adjust straight away, and most players do, but he hasn't at all. He came in and just immediately like that looked like an Arsenal player. And he's continued that form in pre-season and really excited to see what he's going to bring once the Premier League gets underway. OK, after the game, there was no Balogun again at all in the squad. Um, I should have mentioned that at the start of this show, actually, when I was going through the teams and the substitutes. But there was no Balogun. We hadn't had an explanation from Mikel Arteta before the game, but we have one now. This is what he had to say when he spoke in his post-match press conference about Balogun's absence. He said he wasn't available. He's had a little foot injury and he hasn't been training with us. So he wasn't available to us. That was the reason. He was then asked, you know, is he part of his your plans though? And he said, yes, but he needs to play and he needs to get minutes. He needs to get fit and he needs to get minutes. Um, and we'll see, basically, is what, um, what he said. So, you know, I don't think it was absolute confirmation or anything like that that Balogun's going to be around far from it but at least it's been a little bit it's a little bit clearer now in terms of why Balogun hasn't been playing and it is because of a little foot injury which is really disappointing for him you know it's been a big it's a really big pre-season for him he was going to get his chance to play it was in America of course where he's just pledged his allegiance to play for the country you know he was a big kind of center of attention from the American media and then to miss the last two games Definitely disappointed for him. I'm sure he's disappointed by it. And I think for Arsenal as well, it's disappointing because we all wanted to have a look at Balogun um, during this preseason. And it's been a, been a bit of a shame, really, that we haven't had the opportunity to do that. Mikel did also speak about injuries to Zinchenko and Declan Rice. Rice didn't play. Um, and it's just a small little issue for Declan. Um, this is what Mikel had to say about them. He said, Deck had quite a strong kick in training and we didn't want to take a risk. He wasn't comfortable to train yesterday or today. And so we decided not to play him on Zinchenko. This is what Arteta said. He said he had a muscular injury again. Unfortunately, he's getting back. I think he'll be back soon, but it's a shame that he hasn't been with us the whole tour. It is a real shame that, and you know, Zinchenko's injury issues are, they're frustrating, shall we say. Um, he's missing a lot of games really wanted to see him fit for the summer. That hasn't been the case. And you kind of look at it now, we've only got a couple of games before the Premier League season starts. And and um, yeah, it's a bit of a worry, Zinchenko. Fingers crossed he will be back sooner rather than later. Okay, let's talk about some of your questions and comments, shall we? Now, before we wrap things up, just a little one here from Joshua, who said, how about a little intro tune for the videos, Charles? There is one coming, Joshua. It's been worked on at the moment. It's a really short, it's not really an intro tune. It's just a short little intro. Uh, uh, Jeff, basically, that's it. It's just a short uh, animated short little intro with a bit of music. It's about 10 seconds long, but it's been worked on by someone who's far better at that sort of thing than I am. Mine would be rubbish, but this one looks good and it should be ready pretty soon. So it is coming. So you won't just get that awkward straight in. Uh, hello, it's Charles Watts here that uh, you've been having to put up with for the last couple of weeks, but it, there is something coming. Uh, here's one from 
Phil Sharp says, good morning, Charles. After last night's Barcelona match and the possibly surprise addition of Timber at left back and the fact we've now tried Tierney, Tom, Tommy and Timber and Kivior, it's quite likely that Zinchenko won't be starting the season 100% fit. Yeah, and I think what Mikel Arteta had to say there certainly suggests and points to that. Even if he's back now and gets back for either the City game or the Monaco game next week in the Emirates Cup, I, I just find, I find it really hard to believe that Zinchenko will be in the team for that first game against Nottingham Forest when the Premier League gets underway. He just has had no summer, no training, no fitness work. I mean, he's been over there, which has at least been one little positive. So he's been with the squad. He's been doing stuff with the medical staff, but he's going to be way behind the other players. And, you know, the good thing for Arsenal is they've got lots of options who can play there. And we've seen that with um, what Mikel's done this pre-season. You've obviously got Tierney, he's a natural left back, but then you've got Kivior, Timber and... Uh, Tommy Asu as well. So there's plenty of options for Mikel Arteta to uh, to work with in there. But it is a shame, certainly, that it looks like Tommy Asu is going to miss out. Uh, not Tommy Asu, sorry, Zinchenko. Uh, it's from, from Jevon Wonders. It says, hi, Charles, with the US tour now wrapped up, who are your winners and losers of this tour? Personally, my biggest winners are Trossard and Tierney. Wherever they have played, I've been really impressed. Yeah, I think that definitely the winners there. You're looking at Trossard 100%. I think Tierney, although he hasn't started a game, has had an excellent preseason, and every time he's come on, he's looked really strong and sharp. Um, so I think he's up there. I think Smith Rowe, he was really bright again today. He just looks really hungry. When he came on today, he made a big impact, I thought. And um, yeah, I think he's shown that he's got a lot about him still and has certainly put some thought into Mikel Arteta's mind about what he should do with him this, um, this summer. So I think those have definitely been winners I'm trying to think who else really has stood out for me. I think losers, I think Balogun, not because of his performances, but just because of the fact he's been injured and he's missed this big opportunity to impress in the States. And it's just a real shame what's happened there. So I think he has to be sort of classed as a loser because of how unfortunate it's been. I think Zinchenko as well, the fact that he hasn't played, you know, that's a big, big blow to him and to Arsenal ahead of the new season. You wanted that fitness into him. So I think he's definitely been a loser. I mean, Eddie Nketiah has struggled, didn't make his mark, did he? Didn't score a goal um, and just struggled whenever he was on the pitch and so didn't take the opportunities when it was given to him. So I think Eddie's Eddie's had a, a relatively poor summer so far and he needs it would be really handy for him if he could get a goal um, in one of the two games before the season starts. Um, so I'd say those guys, I mean, Havertz, to be fair, I think has been a winner. He got a lot of grief, but he scored two goals in three games and he's settled in and he's you know, he's made an impact. He scored goals. He's still learning in that position. But, you know, that's a real, real positive for, for Arsenal as well. Uh, here's one from Bernard that I thought I'd put in just because I wanted to argue against this, to be fair. I saw the comment. I thought, you know what? I just want to I want to argue against it. He said, Havertz is a waste of 65 million. A good player shows straight away. Look at Sanchez, Podolsky, Orba, Tomiyasu, White. I mean, that's, I don't really know what to expl- how to describe that apart from rubbish, to be fair. Burn. I'm sorry, but Thierry Henry's like Thierry Henry and Dennis Bergkamp are probably the two greatest players I've ever seen play for Arsenal. Both of them started very, very slowly. It took Dennis seven odd games to score a goal in the league. It took Thierry more than that, I think, and he really struggled. So Robert Perez, it took him half a season to settle in to Arsenal. Again, one of the greatest players I've ever seen in an Arsenal shirt. So I just don't agree with that at all. I have to say. And, you know, Ronaldo at Manchester United, I know he was a young kid when he signed, but it took him a while to really um, settle in and, and make his make his mark on a consistent basis. There's been so many examples of players who have taken a bit of time to settle and then gone on to be really, really strong players. So, um, so yeah, I don't agree with it at all, to be honest. And I think, um, you know, Havertz, he's played two games, he's played three goals, played three games, scored two goals. Um, I mean... There's <laughs> not much more you can ask from attacking midfielder, I don't think, than that. And he's going to get better the more he settles in. So, yeah, that's my response to that, I have to say. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching or listening. Everyone, I do appreciate your time. As always, have a very good end to your Thursday, whatever it is you're doing. I'll be back tomorrow for another show to uh, discuss anything else that's gone on since then. Arsenal squad, of course, now flying back to the UK. You'll have a few days training at London Colney before the Emirates Cup next week. The first game at the Emirates of the summer. Of course, I'm heading off on holiday on Saturday, so I won't be there, unfortunately, but I will be back in a couple of weeks' time. To Can't wait to see the boys in action at the Emirates. Have a great day, everyone. I'll speak to you very, very soon. <laughs>